cut the top off so you can scoop out the insides. It takes a sharp knife. I'm glad that Corey's father is helping her. It's much safer that way. Eager to get inside? <laughs> Getting my inside scooped out tickles me. <laughs> now comes the fun part. Look at Corey's hand. Kind of gooey, isn't it? Corey is going to carve the face with a small knife. Hello, I'm the Bunny Man. And I'm Crazy Susie. And we are in the Eyes of Terror. And it's just a few more days of Halloween. So close. So close. And tonight's movie is As Above, So Below. <laughs> this movie can be found on Netflix. It's one hour and 33 minutes. You want to do the, the casting? It's rated R. It was, it's a 2014 film. IMDB gives it a 6.2 out of 10. It's listed as a horror mystery thriller. It was directed by John Eric Dowdle. Dowdle? I don't know. Names are complicated. D-O-W-D-L-E. Sounds fine to me. The writers are John Eric Dowdle and Drew Dowdle. The cast is... Old Dowdles. <laughs> <laughs> Perdith Weeks plays Scar Scarlet. <laughs> uh, ben... That's a name. Feldelman plays George. Dowdleman. <laughs> Edwin, Edwin Dodge plays Benji. Francosis Civil plays Papillon. Papillon. So many strange names. They're also French. Marleon Lobert. Navette, I guess. Plays Soxy. Suxy. Suxy. Ali Moxier plays Zed. Coxme Costri plays Letop. Hamed, I don't know. Reza? I, yeah, sure. Theo, I don't know. Plays a gloomy teenager. Anyway, the rest of them are just random people. Uh, the full list can be found on imdb.com. And again, this film is not for children. But it could be for, like, older children? Um, Pre-teens? I would view it before you decide. There's no nudity. There's very little killing in it. So I'm just... I mean, it's horrific imagery, but it's nothing, sh like, too terribly shocking. That's what I was trying to get at. So This film is loosely based on... On the seven layers of hell, um, the estimated budget is five hundred thousand dollars, and the synopsis is: when a team of explorers ventures into the catacombs that lie beneath the streets of Paris, they uncover the dark secrets that lies within the cities of the dead. The microphone isn't going to magically spout out treats. Although I'm sure you make that connection that when it's <laughs> out you get treats. <laughs> so you want to do what are we drinking? What are we drinking? What are you drinking? I'm having watermelon strawberry circle water. And you rate that... Mm. What do you mean I rate it at what? what? Do you like it? Not like it's okay. it? It's okay. What's your rating between one and an ostrich? I don't know what ostrich tastes like. So a pink flamingo? I don't know what a pink flamingo tastes like. Like fuchsia. What does fuchsia <laughs> taste like? I imagine it tastes very chemically. <laughs> I don't want to taste fuchsia. <laughs> The lighter version of Wav. Wav? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just like the word Wav. It's ugly. Oh, it's ugly. I just like the I just like the the word. 
Not the color, the word. Can you see the color? I don't think so. It's got red in it. I know it's ugly, and I don't want it anywhere near me at any time, at any point. You just like saying it. I just like the word. We want the unmauve. <laughs> yeah. The lack of mauve is better. So, uh, I'm drinking... Funny, because uh, I did write in Fuchsia. Ha ha. See? I'm drinking More a... hot people, but you can call it Fuchsia, I suppose. I'm drinking a high-gravity lager. Earthquake! That, that's literally what it is. There's no descriptor on this, but it's just an exciting can. And it's 10% by alcohol. kind of just looks like... It looks like an energy drink. Yeah. I'm afraid of what contains in the earthquake drink. Maybe it's going to make your stomach feel like it was an earthquake. It drank an earthquake. Mm. Probably not going to make your stomach feel very good after you drink it. So it's going to taste like asphalt. You're going to wish you drank circle instead of earthquake. So it's going to taste like asphalt and uh, steel and tar with a bit of gravel. You sure you don't want a Luna biscuit instead? It doesn't smell bad. It smells like a cheap beer. Yeah. My shirt's thirsty. Now you're going to smell like a cheap beer. Hey, baby. It smells like a Budweiser. Now you don't want to try it. <laughs> Bottoms up. Just open mouth. In Just case you guys don't know, my, my sniffer works really well. And <laughs> I guess I want to try it. <laughs> my mouth is in protest. Are you... Duffy? I am. Hey, see? Most of your taste is in your nose. You won't even tell. It's an earthquake in your mouth. It doesn't taste like asphalt. Maybe it would have tasted better than this. <sighs> I did have a chan chance of gravel pumpkin pie yesterday, so... Definitely I was on the cheaper beer side. Tastes cheap? Yeah. It smells cheap. Very hoppy. It's got like a energy drink, like it's like a. It's not good. It smells mauve. It tastes mauve. <laughs> it tastes like mauve. It tastes like mauve. Between a one and mauve, this is definitely mauve. <laughs> not. I would not recommend this. Not at all. So it tastes like perfume. No. It. You're going to keep tasting it to see what it tastes like. I can't really put my finger on it. It's like, it reminds me of like an energy drink, malt beer, without the additive, like without their flavoring. Mm. So it's like, maybe a fancier Natty Ice. That's a thing? I guess. It's like below a Budweiser, slightly above a Natty Ice. It's probably Budweiser and Natty Ice mixed together. Barf. <laughs> <laughs> Natty Weiser. <laughs> probably the same company makes the two, and it's like, oh, well, we got this little bit of both of these left together. Ah, oh, let's just throw it in this can that makes it sound cool. People will drink it. I honestly am probably going to have to throw this out. It smells bad. I just... I can't place... This one was like just like because they had it. And I was like, there was no other good option. Definitely won't get this again. And it comes in a big... It comes in a 16 fluid ounce. It's... It's a whole lot of bad. It's definitely a party beer. Yeah, one that you can push off on other people. No, like definitely get like just constantly slug slug this crap after your taste buds die. About pack and a half in. Yeah, and you feel like death the next day. Yeah, so definitely mauve. Mm. This is so below. Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere near above. <sighs> okay. And it's very singular tasting. It's flat. And it tastes like flat beer too. That is is the worst. It's like 
I'm one single. You, whatever they have left at the end of the batch, they just swung it in a can. I'm waiting for me to pick it up. Good job. Mm hmm. You probably could shotgun this thing and be. <coughs> Alright. You wanna. You wanna. Start off? Put it down. I don't like waste. No, no, no. This waste. I, I don't want to hear you complaining about the stomach ache. And, and I don't want to hear you that you feel bad. No! Stop! Just put it down. Okay, I'm now drinking. It's half and half tea. Non alcoholic. Sometimes not being able to drink alcohol is actually good. It actually makes the tea taste better. Alright. <clears throat> I'm going to drag this taste out of my mouth real quick. Don't bite it. There. Alright. Let's get into the movie. Alright, we open on a young woman riding a bus. The uh, into the Habala region. Uh, I miss Scarlet. Okay. Uh, because a series of tunnels are being de demolished by sundown, and she thinks they hold a key to a mystery, and she records the video in case she dies. Next, she meets up with a native of of that like Iraq nation. And, uh, and is given access to the tunnel, which is conveniently in his house. Under his house. Under his house. Um, and they enter the tunnels, like the police are warning people to leave. The man points out a tablet in stone as sirens go off. His name is Reza. Reza. Go off. She breaks, in, uh, breaks through the tablet. Uh, that's set in the stone wall to reveal a bull sculpture, which she says is the rose key. As well, the writing on it is the rose key. Yeah, not the sculpture. Yeah, it's 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 inscribed on on every surface that's visible. Yeah. Uh, as they uh, as they count down, she videos the inscriptions as. The, as Reza goes back to his house, when she leaves the tunnel, the, the tunnel or the, the chamber where the rose key's at, and leads into the tunnel, she sees a man in a canvas coat hanging by his neck. Then the tunnel explodes as she runs to the man's house, or to Reza's house, and she makes it. Reza, the man, warns Scarlet, he reminds her of her father. And that she is going down a path of madness. Everyone who hunts for Flamel Stone is goes crazy, and he warns they all wind up dead. Or he says they are crazy, and they wind up dead. Then we get an interview with Scarlet Marlowe, our main protagonist. We found out she is a professor at the University College London, has a PhD in urban. Archaeology, a master's in chemistry, and a PhD in symbology. She's also fluent in four spoken languages, two dead ones, and a black belt in Kara. Uh, Karamaga. Karamaga. So watch out. Yeah. All at the age of like 22. <coughs> They're not sitting her up as the Mary Sue. You're mistaken. Um. We find out her father was a uh, studious man. We find out her father taught her about the Philosopher's Stone. That is a... And then she gives an explanation of it. Uh, we find out that... They, they, he asks about what her father taught her about the Philosopher's Stone. She says everything. Yeah. And she goes on and saying it's an elusive substance. They get turned base metals into gold... And, and provides the key, key to, to your eternal life. life. And then she goes into what alchemy is. We also find out her father uh, killed himself by hanging. 
And then we get a tour and a history of Nicholas Flamel. Uh, we find out the significance of the Rose Key, which is a Rosetta Stone that translates alchemy symbols into Aramaic, which she doesn't speak, but she knows someone who does. Which I find really weird that she doesn't speak Aramaic because that's sort of like the base of alchemy. Aramaic is a base of alchemy, and I actually have a small history of what al what alchemy is. So. Just found that she doesn't speak Aramaic. You mean you don't? If I was going in, if I was going to be studious in alchemy, I would definitely learn Aramaic. And then uh, that would have made the movie less interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, which she doesn't, but she knows someone who does. In which they go find in a cathedral. We also find out she doesn't have a PhD in stealth because she's really, really noisy. We probably didn't mention at this point that she's being filmed, and the gentleman that's filming her, his name is Benji. You know, like the dog. Yeah. But, so, you know. But she picks the lock to access the stairwell to go up to the bell tower. and the She breaks into a church. No, the church was open, but the stairwell wasn't. Okay, so she breaks into the stairwell to the church. Benzi, ben, Benji is unsure of this, but she explains her friend George has a hobby of breaking into churches and fixing things. George tells Benji to get far away from her because he ended up in a Turkish jail. George. I thought he said George that. did, yeah. She tells him she found the rose key and needs his help. He gets upset that she went by herself to Iran to get the rose key and calls her a lunatic. They ran out of the church to avoid getting going deaf due to the church bells chiming. Which hasn't happened in, in over 200 90, years. 248 years. The people around are very surprised as the bells haven't rang in more than 200 years. George agrees to translate, but that is it. That's as far as he goes. Yep. Later that night, they go back to Flamel's tombstone, and he starts to translate cryptic messages, such as, A sword is limestone, uh, a sword is lime, and star is ammonia, with the hints and the pictures of the key on the, on the tombstone. Um, she grabs it. Again, mind you, this is all like in a... They only have access to this museum for like a short time. Yeah. And all oh, this is on display, so... Right. But she picks up the tombstone. Well, Scarlet derives that since he is carrying the key on his back... Yeah. Then they need to look at the back of the tombstone. So, she freaks George and Benji out... By picking up the tombstone and putting it on its face so, so they can see the back. There's nothing there, so she mixes some chemicals and burns them she on just, the back. She just pours, like, cleaner that has, is ammonia-based. To reveal a message. It says, Winged vultures leads the way with brightest light and darkest day. Underneath the heavens reign what is lost shall be regained halfway twixt the darkest gate and this tablet laid atop a fared a paired fate. Scarlet had a notebook of her dad's alchemist believed that the devil's number was 741. So it would make sense that they would think that hell would be 741 feet below the surface of the earth. So, 
370.5 feet below Flamel's tombstone, we will find the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, if it were that easy. Yeah. Then, uh, and then they conclude the stone is in uh, the Paris catacombs. At home, they lay out the catacomb map, which leads to a revelation that there is no tunnel under Flamel's tomb. That George remember, and then George remembers the collapse of three key areas, one of them by Flamel's tomb, which leaves the question: How did that part of the city collapse if it's on solid ground? The conclusion is a secret chamber. Then Scarlet is like, we need to go down. But George doesn't like to go underground. We get a tour of the catacombs, which leads her to wanting to go into the off-limits part of the catacombs. Like magic, a man sitting against a pillar asking, tells him to ask for a pup pup along, and he'll bring you. He'll take you. He yeah, says. he'll take you. As as a tour guide comes to fetch them, he disappears. The man at the pillar. Uh, later, they go find Papillon at a bar. Uh, somehow, as they look for for him, a young woman walks slowly outside by these massive windows outside of this bar. I just find that really to be an interesting sort of like thing. In the background, you see this woman just like this lone woman just slowly walking. And she sort of had like the black and eyes, like the the guy that, that told him to go look for this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, she finds um, Papillon. He shows her a map where she wants to go. He says he has been there. Nothing's there. She goes. It's meant to be invisible because of treasure. Papillon agrees for half of the treasure. She originally said you could have all of it. George steps in and goes, no, you can have half. Um, next day, Papillon and crew get ready to embark on the journey. We meet the crew, have this cringy freestyle rap and other um, introductions. And, they, uh, and then they start planning out the route. Then they head down to an access as they set to the uh, entrance cops come and it, I thought it was several there's just one and just like tackles one I mean it was just a rough he tackle. tackles Papillon yeah as a yeah, rest he like runs and just like dives and <laughs> tackles him yeah as one uh, as the rest go down including George which didn't want to go in the first place because he doesn't like being underground George, of course, is like, I don't want to be here, I don't want to be here, blah, blah, blah. We also find out that his brother drowned in the cave, in a cave in their youth. Scarlet, George sort of have a argument about how he didn't want to come. But, of course, he can't go up through the access because the cop or cops, usually there's multiple cops, I'm just saying. Well, it just shows one. Yeah. But you hear others in the distance, that's what I was trying to say. They they are aware that now this is an entering point, and I think they have. Well, Mister, we didn't see the death. We just see one cop. Yeah, but they do. But Paris does have like they will close up any like they'll mark it and close up and patrol any entrances to the catacombs once it's revealed. So they start their journey in the off limit catacombs. George is not having a good time. As they slush through water, as they come across a group of singers singing their chants, until uh, so they come across an area that requires them to climb across some remains. Bones. Hmm? Bones. Remains. When you say remains, it makes you think that there's just gooey bodies. They're dried up bones. The bones of dead Frenchmen. How do you know the Frenchmen? They don't have brace. The bones of uncountless untold humans <laughs> that most likely were Parisian. They're just bones. 
Scarlet tells Papillon that they can take uh, a different route that's more direct. Yeah. What she says is an evil place or a bad place. It's an evil tunnel. Yeah. He says no one goes there. He tells the story of a friend, the mole, the, uh, that lives in the catacombs. He knew every system, every tunnel, but that one. And he went inside that area, although he knew it was a horrible place. And no one has seen him since. Papillon and crew said they want to go uh, the the more the the long way around. Over the bones we go. Well, they got it through over the bones, and then there's like a longer way that I think takes into like through a lake or whatever. No, they went over the bones to avoid going into the evil tunnel. But once they got over the bones, they ended up having to go through the evil tunnel anyway. Yeah. And Papillon argued with them about how they, that's not normally how the layout is. It's not normally there. No. Okay. Because that's why they went over the bones. We were talking about bones and I got sidetracked. So Benji's freaking out because bones, the bones have rats in it. Zed plays a, a Gata game. And Scarlet doesn't find it bad. It's like a, a Serta made from the bones of a thousand dead. And then uh, Benji's not having a good time and is getting irritated about the uh, the chorus's choice of songs because it's just like mon, it's just monotone droning basically. As Benji gets free, the tunnel collapses, but all are safe. And Papillon is shocked that they are not where they are supposed to be. The only option is a small tunnel that Papillon says he has never been to. As they go down the tunnel to find a classic Papillon tag, because he tags everywhere he's been. Scarlet freaks out on this, saying, I thought you'd never been here. He says he's never been there. So, he says it's not his. Uh, and then we hear a phone ring. We find out the phone companies used to run lines down there, but 50 years ago, they took everything out, and the phone, uh, they took everything out of that area, so there should be no phones, the, but the phone continues to ring. George finds the, an exact spot where the city collapsed. It mentions hundreds of people died there and felt... The, Hundreds of people fell to their deaths right here, and then they fixed. It, uh, and when they fixed it, fifty more people disappeared. They go down the tunnel a little bit further to find a piano. George says his family had one just like uh, that one that him and his brother Danny would play. The but the A4 key was screwed up on it. George starts playing. Bonnie lies over the ocean to find the exact A4 key. Screwed up. Then the phone rings again. Scarlet charges ahead. Well, everyone tells her to hold on. Scarlet answers the phone. A man asks, why wouldn't you talk to me? She asks, how is this? And of course, it's a army recruiter. Why don't you talk to me? Who is this? Hi, this is Mike. Sergeant Mike from the uh, United States Air Force. <laughs> we are interested in uh, recruiting you, but I'm in Paris. And... Stay there. We'll come to you. <laughs> yeah. Then, uh, then a groan. Then a disembodied voice says, you shouldn't be here. They freak out and the man emerges. It's the mole. It's he, a little. Whatever. He says none of the, uh, of them came to look for him and to follow him. Uh, they looked, they looked for him. Then he tells, tells them to follow them. You didn't come to look for me, but come along. Come, come. I, I have... We're all good friends. Come on. As they follow, he he, he moves and appears uh, far ahead of them. And then we, we start hearing and seeing cracks in the tunnel. Uh, cracks in the ceiling of the tunnel to start as they move forward. So basically... It's going to happen again. If they move backwards, the tunnel's going to collapse in on them, forcing them to only go in one direction. 
They follow Latrope and informs them that the only way out is Latrope? death. Latrope. 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 He's not a trophy. Uh, informs them that the only way out is down. Uh, ominous, I guess. They come to a well-like structure. Scarlet says the system is perfectly wedged between the east and south system, and they agree to go down the hole. As George is stuck, Benji comes crashing down, and George... got to go in the hole. <laughs> uh, George breaks his momentum, and Benji informs, him, uh, informs them his clip broke. And he uh, tears up his hand. He teared up his hands because he's holding onto the rope. George and Scarlet are talking when George falls in a little stream. The start. Benji's the one that falls. Yeah, Ben. But George catches him because he's stuck. He hits George. Yeah, he sort of. He inadvertently catches him. Yeah, with his body. Yeah, well, that's still... He broke his fall with style. Let's just put it that way. And then when they hit... When uh, George falls into this little stream, uh, their hearing starts to get muffled, and then lights flicker, random noises begin, and a figure appears and disappears. They ask, what was that? And the, and the mole says, what, but who? But the mole says, not what, but who? They end up in a in a dead end. The mole ominously says, I thought it was the end too. George finds a symbol of a vulture, which reminds Scarlet of the winged vulture leads your way, and that she finds a scarab engraved on a rock, which George does not. Uh, where George goes, didn't the Egyptians have a odd way of hiding tombs, which leads Scarlet to think of a it's a name. Uh, I think it's Batalman Nick. It's basically like a stone padlock based on Jenga. So if you pick the wrong lock, uh, you get a Jenga and you all die. Yeah, the walls come tumbling down. Yeah. Um, they figure out the sequence, sequence and open a secret passageway. Yeah. And again, it requires history and planning alignments. And the stone rolls back, and she mentions that it's been like the first 500 years that the stone has rolled back. Scarlet crawls into the tunnel to find a balding man in a white tunic with a red cross laying on on a slab. Uh, the question is, why is he not rotting? They find a engraving of. That says vitriol. It translates into the eternal parts of the earth. By rectification, thou shalt find the hidden stone. The interior parts of the earth. Interior parts of the earth. By rectification, thou shalt find the hidden stone. Papillon asks if he is dead. George says, yeah, for about 700 years. Uh, Scarlet says it means to go deeper and orders everyone to turn off. Their headlights. Head, their mounted lights. Headlamps. Yeah. Headlights. <laughs> We're now into cars. <laughs> uh, in the dark, they see some lights in a shallow uh, pool. Scarlet and George knock some rocks loose, and Scarlet swims to find the treasure room with torches alight. George and others follow. Scarlet finds a wall with, with Egyptian hieroglyphs. Papillon and others see the gold. The mole is acting very strange. We also find out that the philosopher's stone can light a lamp for eternity. The real reason is... The real reason we find out is that was it is because big whale oil didn't like it. Seriously. <laughs> George asks, where is it? And Scarlet shows him where. Uh, and tells a story of the moon god and... Uh, sky goddess's love. Papillon is breaking into the treasure room, and we find out that that's a trap, and the ceiling collapses. Most of them are okay, but Suxi and 
Le, uh, trope, Le Tope is missing. They are trapped. Susie's arm is severely broken and bleeding. Scarlet uses a stone to heal the wound. They start thinking and look for a back door till they find the inscription Porta Alamathica, Alamathica and a symbol for as above, so below. If a door is on the ceiling, it's, it should be on the floor. It has to be on the floor because nothing in alchemy is like one thing. There's always like mirror images of it some, from what I understand. They crawl through the passage till they find an inscription that reads, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here, which is the signing of going through the gates of hell. The group is not happy to go into the passage and crawl on their bellies to enter the kingdom of darkness. The entire, um, they enter a room that looks uh, the same as the one they, they just left, but it's not as the wrong, it's the wrong way around. The above, so it's, it's inverted and the entrance is gone. Papillon asks the real question, are they dead? Papillon goes into the water pool to the other side as he does. Lights flicker, strange noises are heard as they emerge in the crypt where the corpse wheezing is wheezing to find Trope sitting in the room. They shine the light on him as he jumps up and screams. Suxi touches him only to kill number one, be uh, picked up. And have her head smashed up against the ground. Yeah, picked up and have her head smashed into the ground. I give it a four out of five. They try to fix it with a stone, but she's gone because the stone cannot bring back the dead. And then... Uh, Papillon covers her with his jacket. Scarlet again reminds them they have to keep moving. Yeah. And now Flamel has some fresh meat to make a nice stew. Uh, and they estimate that they are about a thousand feet down. Benji uh, hooks up to go down. So we see a fig, and then we see a figure walk behind him. He investigates only to uh, be jumped, jump killed, number two, and he plunges down, and we get, and then Benji is now more meat for from El Stew. I'm not sure you explained that well. Basically, they're going back the way they came. So yeah, they went through the tunnel, and now they're having to go back down the shaft. That's kind of like a what, what did you call that? Inverted? No, the... That's a well-like thing. The well-type tunnel they're having to go down. So Benji's at the top of it, having to go down, and he hears a baby's cry and calls out. A figure jumps up behind him. Well, he has like a jump scare, and he falls down the tunnel and splat. Basically, we're starting to see like how the same stuff happening that they did previously right but accidents the same accidents so he would have died if George wasn't there stuck yeah but he could have died in the little kind of narrow passageway where the bones were because it collapsed yeah he narrowly escaped the collapse. I think that was more of a narrow escape as a warning you cannot go back. You can't go back that way. Yeah. So it's not a you could have died, it was more of a scare tactic of um They continue on. They climb over the bones. Weird, because you know, that had collapsed. Anyway. Well, everything's inverted now. So They're you know, on the below. In the water between the bones... George sees his... George sees his brother, Danny, in the water. And freaks out. Because Danny says, help. Yeah. Scarlet has to calm him. Next, they pass a burning car. Pepion yells out, it wasn't my fault. And then a... Uh, then we see there's a person inside of the car. A force pulls Papillon into the car. 
Then the car implodes for kill number three. Papillon gets a leg up, four out of five. All that is left of Papillon is his leg sticking up from the the cavern floor. Yeah, it just like sucks him and the car into the ground. Yeah. The rest of the crew is shocked, but they continue on down another tunnel, which they hear screaming and odd noises. George tells Scar- Scarlet that Turkey was the greatest week of his life. He just wanted her to know. What a touching moment. They see a dark hooded figure and they all kind of freak out. Yeah, there's a dark hooded figure in like a cha- in a chair. He's actually trying to give them dark to help them help them continue on to the, the next Souls arena. Dark Souls players would get that. Yeah. <laughs> they turn the corner and find the hooded figure sitting in a chair. They were going to try and sneak past, but the moaning heads on the wall gave them away. And this made the hooded figure stand and go back to his rounds. Yep. A moaning figure from the wall escapes and attacks George. Scarlet tries to heal him with the stone and tells Zed to stay with him. I guess she figures out that in the below, the above stone isn't effective. Yeah. So, and she's like, she, and then she, and then she mutters uh, vitriol and she gets hung up on uh, rectification and she just has to rectify it to get the right hidden stone. So she goes back to the chamber and and uh, palms one of these stone monks and knocks him to the ground. And then all this, you know, it turns into almost like a video game type thing here. I am I was waiting for the, like, kill, like, count on the top or whatever. Um, and then, so she makes her way through the, where the stone monks are, through the stream, which turns to blood. And hands attack her. She gets to the chamber, sees her dad with her uh, with her face hanging. She goes to the chamber, places a stone in the spot. She wipes the sun disc to see herself. When she gets to her dad, she hugs him and tells tells him that she didn't know that he was in that much pain, and he disappears. She gets to back, and it seems like everything, this, the bloodstream is now a regular stream. Like there's no hands trying to grab at her. Uh, she gets to George and places her hand on him, and he is miraculously healed. Because she believes that he was healed. Yeah. Then they run down another tunnel to another well. They get to the exit. Wall. It's another vertical shaft. She says they have to jump to rectify themselves. They think she's crazy. She asks George why he sees his brother down there. Danny drowned waiting. Then Zed, he says he has a child he has never seen. George says it's not going to work, but she refuses to go without him. They all jump and hit the bottom with coughs. They realize in the bottom is a manhole. They open it and... Well, at first they try to pry it. Yeah, they try to pry it up. And then they they realize... They realize they could push it and push the whole manhole cover away. So they push it away. The odd thing is, like, they're they're on top of the manhole. And when they push the manhole away, when they go to crawl out, they're on the underside of the manhole. So then when they go to crawl out, they have to crawl out upside down to get on top of the street. Instead of, like, falling out. Instead of falling out onto the street. So basically everything returns to normal. Like he would, you normally exit a manhole, right? Compared to falling out, right? And, so they're upside down. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then so they climb out. They have their goodbyes. Zed they goes, push the cover back over the manhole. 
They hug each other. Zed leaves. Scarlet cries in George's arms. It reverts back to the original recording of Scarlet. She says, she isn't a treasure hunter. She is a student and only wishes to gain the truth. Yep. So you want to give your, let me do mine and then you can do yours. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. I said the character development was much better than most. The overall primrose of the... Primrose. Sorry. The overall premise of it, as far as the thirst for the truth, I really like that. The ending, I felt, was kind of flat, um, especially compared to the rest of the film, because it kind of leads you up to this really great ending, and it just kind of went... The film is pretty informative. Uh, it makes you want to think it's going to be kind of scary, and it's not at all. Yeah. Um, there is blood and gore. Not really that much. Um, I really don't understand why they have this listed even as a horror film. I could see it maybe as a thriller. Yeah. But again, but, not as a horror but film. again, it goes into the horror is a catch-all for anything with sort of any scary aspect to it. I don't even think it's scary, but... I, mean, I think he, this film really had a lot of potential if maybe they really added a lot of more horror to the history of it. Yeah. And really maybe added like, oh, if you broke open this tomb, you were going to be cursed or something like that. Something, you know? yeah. It really needed some depth to it. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of like, oh, well, you found it. Here you go. That was it. I mean, I like that they added... A little bit of layering to it, but then it seemed like it was too easy. Yeah. I mean, do mine? They, they acted like it was going to be really difficult, and it was like... So, do you, do you do mine? Yeah. Okay. So, I give it also a 3.5 out of 5. Overall, the film is an interesting concept. Towards the end, it sort of falls flat with her hitting the stone monks, some aspects, and the fact that... She, they need to confess her sins before leaving is strange and odd to survive. I wonder what would have happened if they didn't. And, uh... They didn't live with anything. Well, I'm saying... So, let me... Re- they so, left with their lives. Okay, so my question... If they didn't realize that they had to confess their sins, what would have happened? Would have been... They wouldn't have left. They'd have been trapped there. Would have been just, like, constantly going... Up and down and up and down and up and down. Well, what they, they wouldn't have left. They would have died. Yeah, and what would have uh, happened if they, if someone would have brought some of the gold with them? So there's other layers I could I I would like to, like instead of instead of using just the curse, or you know not saying your sins, but like Papillon had, like he shoved some gold into his knapsack. Maybe he did. But he doesn't say that, so if you got that was his main motivation, so you could assume that he could you could have, but if nothing else have happened, then that would have been like that one thing. But I mean, it could have also been like there was like a trail of gold, like a gold coin fell out of his pocket, like he hastily threw it in there so he didn't secure it all the way. The gold is also the end of your demise, your greed is your demise, you know, going along with. I mean, they even could have used, like, the 12 uh, deadly sins in a way, sloth greed. They sort of tried, but they didn't. And then, it, like you said, with her, uh, it was too easy because she was a know-it-all. And she was very much the Mary Sue. No one else did anything. I would like to have seen, like, maybe somebody else knew about the Egyptian padlock type thing. You know, the only thing, like, out of her repertoire of doing this solely by her... Two things. Solely by herself is, A, she didn't know the catacombs. But then they acted like she did. That that bothered me. Like, because she had a map of the catacombs. And as they pointed out, you don't know the catacombs like what we do. 
because there's a lot of unknown systems because it's not fully mapped out. And she acts like because she has a map. And Papillon said that you have a map, but that doesn't mean anything because you don't know them. It doesn't tell you which tunnels are flooded and which ones are collapsed. But with how they got through them, he really did very little. That's what I'm saying. Is like, And so she took the lead the entire time. She was the expert in everything. She was the Mary Sue. She figured it all out, like, without even really thinking. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like, every little riddle, she automatically already knew the answer to. You know, like the sun disk. She was the reason. She had to believe. She had to give it. Even though monks weren't a deterrence. Climbing up the rope without any equipment it wasn't any deterrence she you know it, that's what bothered me she was the perfect mary sue yeah. you know the only thing holding her back the only reason why she needed george was because of the aramaic aspect if she would have just known aramaic which is weird that she would go into a country knowing where this is and she, supposedly her dad set her up for all life and knowing the history of alchemy if you're going to be like an expert on alchemy, you need to know Aramaic. That's my point. You know, that's her one blind side out of all this crap. It just... And again, I felt like the stone monks were there just to be like, ha ha, there's a, there's a problem, but we're not really going to do anything with it. And it's the same with the, the bloody hands from the stream or the... the half tone like the the small uh deafness you know it didn't hinder her in any way it didn't really hinder the group in any way and then my question is is if they didn't open up the gold door what would have happened would the old man pop up and say congratulations you made it uh the exit is down this tunnel uh to the left watch out for the monks and uh no, they wouldn't have had to deal with the monks. No, but my point is... You know, they my, wouldn't have had to go below. They would have just no, went back down the I, I mean, that's my whole point. What would have happened if they did everything perfect? You know, there is nothing really... It just... You see what I'm trying to get at? There, it's just... If it wasn't for... If it wasn't for, like, the greed of a part of the group, this would never have... What would... What would have happened if they weren't, didn't get greedy? You know, like, it just doesn't seem like even if you would get the Philosopher's Stone, as easy as it was, what would have been, everything worked out perfectly, you got this stone, now what? Who's to say that the stone didn't set it off? Well, and there's that too. Because the stone is way more valuable than all that gold. Yeah. You can heal people with it. You can turn random objects into gold. Okay. Yeah. I mean... And again, it's like you could assume that 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 figure is Flamel. You can, and I mean, there's also a part of me I'm surprised he didn't come across Harry Potter and the gang. I'm just saying. Does any time they like philosophers? What I don't understand that the one thing they didn't really answer. They said that Flamel, his body and his wife's body went missing. Yeah. Where's his wife's body? Yeah, there's that too. It's like. Because it does mention two, laid on the top of two, a perpetual, you know. And well, what, if I remember right, tunic that he was wearing was for the Knights Templar. Why would he be wearing a Knights Templar tunic, especially when I go into the history of it? He has no association that I know of to the Knights Templar. So that was another, like, haha, we have another historical group that is a secretive group. But they had nothing to do with the philosophers. Tomb, everything that the Templars did was on Solomon's temple. So, I don't really see the correlation between the two. Uh, other than it was a secret French organization. Because the Narcissus Templar started off in, Fr- in France and they had the largest bank and blah, 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 blah. So, <clears throat> um, things I did like it. I liked the setting. And the mystery could have been less Scarlet know-it-all. And maybe use the other members of the team to point something out or figure something out. Other than George and Scarlet, the others felt like cannon fodder. Like, one of you Moes are going to screw up on this, and I know it. Mm-hmm. So it's going to make things a little bit more difficult on me. 
I also would think it would have been awesome if the the mole was standing over his own body at the end before, like, it sort of just, like, clicked that he was dead. You know, it would have been more of a, haha, got you, I hate that in your face type stuff. I just think it would have been just that little extra, sort of like, you've been deceived by whatever force is drawing them into this and is causing the hallucinations or whatever you want to call it. And also that too, I was like, I'm wondering what's causing this sort of trickery. Is it the stone? Is it... Because he added paranormal aspects to it, but never explained the paranormal aspects to it. And I just felt like, well, because it's the catacombs. Yeah. Scary factor. Catacombs. Bodies. And it was sort of a... I mean, this movie sort of did drag on a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And uh, it was sort of a letdown. Well, as good as it could have been. All right, so I did some research to go into sort of the origins of all this. So, uh, some history. Uh, so alchemy originated in Chinese texts around 73 to 49 BC and Greco-Roman, uh, and Greco-Roman Egypt in the 1st to 2nd century uh, and was considered modern era or like CE or um, AD now. AD CE's common era is what most people are referring to it now. And uh, in the Greco-Roman Egypt area, it's an ancient branch of natural philosophy that involves philosophy and proto-scientific theories. It was a pra- it was practiced throughout Europe, Africa, and parts of Asia. The aims of alchemy were to were to one find the stone of knowledge, the philosopher's stone, discover the medium of eternal youth and health. The transmutation of base metals, such as lead, to noble metals, i.e. gold. Although the concept is simple, the mindset wasn't. It involved complex spiritual beliefs, which saw everything around them uh, containing a universal spirit. One belief is that metals were to be alive and they grew inside the earth. So they were organic growth inside of the earth compared to already pre-existing. When a common metal was found, the alchemist saw it as an infant. Uh, Like if they would find lead, it was an infantile metal. A simple spiritual physical immaturity form of a pure higher metal such as gold. And the second one would be silver. So they didn't see... It wasn't about how precious it was. What you could do with it. It was the soul maturity of it. So that's why they want to transform all metals into gold. Because you feel like it was the highest... It was the godlike metal. Uh, The alchemists believed metals were not unique properties. But the same thing in different stages of development. Refinement on the way to spiritual perfection. Many texts of alchemy were translated from Greek to Arabic, like I said. So, to me, if you're all about alchemy, you would need to know Arabic. Contrary to belief, the alchemist was, wasn't was simple greedy. They viewed gold as the highest development in nature and came to personify human renewal and regeneration. Gold in all aspects of life was looked to have represented uh, spiritual beauty and triumph over evil. While base metals represented sin, an unrepentant individual who is susceptible to darkness. The alchemist believed all things were made of fire, air, water, and earth, instead of atoms and elements that we know of today. The belief, if you change, if you change the properties of the either the fire, air, water, or earth, you can achieve perfection. Uh, the, the essential substances used in alchemy are salt, mercury, and sulfur. So, if you, I think gold was a balance of all of those elements of that metal. That's how it could be achieved. So it's inner workings on how to achieve the, that balance. 
Without alchemy, we would never have had modern science. We could look uh, back with a modern lens and think, here's a simplistic way of looking at things. Uh, but, I mean, everything it evolves. I mean, it's stupid to say, well, because they didn't believe in atoms. Well, you, can, you can't see atoms. Mm -hmm. So, at least there was some, some sort of belief because, you know, those element, the four elements were something they dealt with every day, so why not think that things were made up of all four elements? Uh, Nicholas Femel was born in 1330 and died uh, the 22nd of March of 1418. He was a French script and manuscript seller. He married Pernel Flamel in 1368. After his death, Flamel de developed a reputation as an alchemist. The Legend of Flamel are based on the 1612, which was uh, published in Paris, and in the 1624, which was published in London, works called La Verde Figures Her uh, Hieroglyphics, which claimed Flamel, claimed Flamel created the Philosopher's Stone and turned base metals into gold, and his wife, uh, Pernell, achieved immortality through the elixir of life. In the publication, it claimed Flamel was commissioned for a uh, tophnium at Crematère des Innocents, which is now long, and it's so it's basically like a like an arch uh, sculpture, and unfortunately, it's long gone now, and it was even long gone by the publication, uh, and that was in Spain. Uh, where that piece was supposed to be was in Spain. According to the publication, Flamel made his life work to understand a 21-page manuscript he purchased, which is claimed to be a copy of the original text of Abra, Abra Mellon, the mage. The Flamels allegedly decoded enough of the book to successfully replicate its recipe for the Philosopher's Stone, first producing gold in 1382, and then the Philosopher's Stone. The validity was first questioned in 1761, but sightings were embellished by other writers in the 16 and 1700s and expanded the fictional works even more. Uh, by the 1600s, he achieved a legend, Flamel achieved legendary status with other alchemists with references by Isaac Newton and had interest in Flamel and was revealed in his 1800s in several of his manuscript writings. Like he had some journal writings and it was revealed how much he admired Flamel or the legend of Flamel. Also, Victor Hugo, Eric Saté, and Albert Pike all sort of expanded the work of Nicholas Flamel or believed that he was alive. That's what we know of Nicholas Flamel. So it was more of a work of fiction that just blew up. And then the, the Paris Cali Gomes project was started in 1782 to eliminate overflowing cemeteries. The need was urgent because there was a basement wall collapse. Like there's a, a cemetery that was known, basically a pauper cemetery, a well-known pauper cemetery. And the bodies became so much that it collapsed onto this business's uh, basement wall and all these bodies just flowed in mm. to this basement uh, under the weight of the mass graves behind it the city of Paris used pre-existing limestone quarries that helped build the city and small towns will hold the remains of more than 6 million people the catacombs are about 200 miles long and are 80 yards below the city streets there is no light, electricity, or sound, and not all areas are mapped. But there has been cataphiles, which are the people who do explore the cat catacombs, which is sort of like a secretive group. You don't talk about it. You don't even exchange your name and polite light in the above ground. So you have your own secret cataf you know, cataphilic name. Like Litrope. The catacombs have been used for. They found a. Uh, the police have found uh, a full blown um, theater down there. Uh, and when they came back to check it out, it was gone. And there was a note that says, Do not find us. Uh, 
So there, at one point there was a full blown theater. They believe that it's still out there. They just don't know where. Uh, there is a big like ravine in the middle somewhere that uh, there's been pictures taken of pe people enjoying a nice swim in this underground uh, ravine pool. <laughs> it's actually uh, also the catacombs are known for growing of mushrooms that are very popular throughout uh, Parisian restaurants. Dead people mushrooms? Well, the ground would be very fertile. So, yeah, and then, you know, it's also known for its artwork and stuff like that, uh, using the bones as art, which is not uncommon. And also, it's not uncommon for catacombs to exist. There's actually several catacombs throughout the world, including the United States. Not as extensive as the Paris catacombs, but interesting enough. And, I mean, there are people that have disappeared through the, the, out the catacombs. There's a rumored true video of somebody running away, and the video kept playing till it died. It was featured on, like, a major network. So it brings up the validity of it. But it's used as, you know, this could happen to you type thing. Like, if you go explore these uncharted areas alone, especially alone, um, no one would know. You would just disappear. No one would know where you are. And no one's coming to look for you. And obviously, phones, stuff like that, anything that can reach the outside world is of no use down there. The, the, the dead don't need Wi-Fi yet. <laughs> so. Crazy. Uh, yeah, so. I find the history more interesting than the movie, to be honest. But Yeah, pretty much. We'll scare you later. Bye.